Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com, the wonderful world of Jasony stuff. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen whence you are able to safely very safely close your eyes so if you are driving a car never press play on any recordings from myself because I imagine most sleep recordings should only be listened to when <coughs> excuse me when when you're able to close your eyes I want to say safely close your eyes because you could say well I can close my eyes anytime you know to be for you know we're closing our eyes constantly, aren't we? When we blink. I like to blink. And it kind of like... Yeah, technically, we're closing our eyes. I don't know how many thousands of times a day. I don't know. But it's not the same as going for a nap. You know, it's slightly different. Um... I knew someone years ago, they fell asleep at the wheel. It was a family member, actually. And I think he was, he was with someone else who also fell asleep. So they didn't, kind of didn't realise. And I think he woke up. And he said, Oi, wake up, to the passenger. Not realising that he's the one that was asleep. But luckily everything was fine. And, uh, you know, nothing happened. But that's scary. And so I don't... The idea... Because I like to listen to audio recordings. Um, I, li- I produce them. I like to listen to them don't like to listen to mine well I never listen to mine but I do like to listen to uh, my personal favourites would be motivational inspirational um, (laughs) whenever I say motivational inspirational I feel like I want to start singing the Grease song you know Grease Lightning it's high dramatic it's motivational it's Inspiration, it's my master, but you know, it's kind of Asian or whatever. Oh, Denise Fenuton is on television. Oh, let me tell you about Denise Van Uten. I can't believe she doesn't really look that different from the way she did in the early 90s. Isn't it weird? I know it's television, so they can make skeletons look attractive, can't they, on television? But she just, she used to be on the Big Brother, not Big Brother, um, the Big Breakfast, Channel 4's Big Breakfast, in the early 90s. We're talking quite early, early 90s. And she used to be a helicopter weather person, I think, or news or something. She, I don't know, she was in a helicopter anyway, 
doing talking but she was very bubbly and you know all that stuff and clearly very young as well I imagine she still doesn't I don't know how old she is I don't care but just you know when people just look the same she looks older obviously we all do but she looks kind of the same I mean you could say well she's still got the same face yeah I know but a lot of celebrities do like to play around with their faces don't they you know sort of I think I would I don't mean like playing around with it I think if I was going to have plastic surgery I'd want it to be obvious so I, I kind of want to like have one eye on my chin and you know move stuff around having an ear where my nose should be and just you know like putting an extra 50 teeth or something just I, I'd, I'd want to I'd love to have a square head like Frankenstein don't correct me by saying it was Frankenstein's monster not Frankenstein everyone calls it Frankenstein no it, it was Frankenstein's monster was not Frankenstein Frankenstein was the one that invented and created the monster nobody cares but I care alright Andre it's a weird smell in here tonight and uh I think it's me. Isn't it weird when you... Mm, I think I might need a bath. I've had a bath. Oh my goodness. Oh no, don't tell me. Oh, oh never mind. Maybe it's Andre. I took him out for a walk just now. Just, well not just now, because I'm here now. But, you know, five minutes before I started this recording... I took Andre out because he came out, did a wee, and I thought, he's awake. I'll take him for a little walk. And then I'll make a recording, and then I'm going to watch the boxing. And I'm going to have a pizza from the freezer, and I'm going to have a very, very relaxed evening, which is what I need. So I got him. I put his shoes on and he ran into the shed <laughs> the shed the the bedroom shed so he ran into the bedroom shed which is now his go to place he, he sleeps in there for hours now he uses it I mean not even uh, a lot more than me but pretty much 99% more time than I do he uses that garden shed because it's not ready for me to use really I'm still using the I'm doing this in the living room but I have shut all the windows and hopefully you know turn the laptop off so there's minimal background sound I know where Andre is right now because he does the same thing every time he comes back from going out for a walk he especially loves it when he's been in the wet grass covered himself in mud he comes in I take my jacket off put his lead away lock the doors take my shoes off guaranteed where he is he's in the bed rubbing himself getting himself all dry getting all that mud and dirt off of himself on my bed clothes every time so right now I was, I was in the shed trying to coax him out you know well not coax him like here yeah, boy boy yeah, put. He, he's not really that level of um, it, he can't be coaxed if that makes sense he can't be influenced he can't be motivated he can't be coaxed he, he can't anything he just does what he wants when he wants to do it without any interest in what I want to do 
um, without any interest in trying to please me or needing that you know like a dog would be like needy needy and um, some people class that as always oh, so they're so uh, attentive to my needs I mean, it's attentive to the dog's needs being met um, and possibly you know they're lovely dogs I like dogs but very needy if it was a human being you'd kind of probably want to change your telephone number or block them off Facebook but he I wish he was needy but he isn't I'd love him to keep wanting to cuddle me but he doesn't he does cuddle me and he but when he wants so he's kind of like a cat in that sense but in another way I can't coax him come here come, come here come here like cats I've lived with cats in the past and if a cat likes you say hey come on and a cat will jump onto your lap and happily spend hours there sometimes that's what cats are that's one of the best things about cats is very relaxing to have something start stroking a pussy is some kind of sometimes the nicest most relaxing thing you can do whilst watching the television and you know it just personally I don't know if it's the if it's the purring that the pussy makes like I can't do a very good impression like that it's kind of it's a vibrational thing I think so I think it's not so much uh, not just a, a hearing do you hear it but it's it's a vibration in the air it's I think if we could create that a pussy um, in a sense that it was just relax your entire body by by just stroking it and your entire body would get relaxed so if we get something like that like a hat like a pussy hat or something that you could put on and stroke the top of it and then the rest of your body just feels completely relaxed as that vibration of um, purring I can't be I can't do I can do meow um, I can't do the yeah not so good at the um and uh, the cat sounds but then my dog sounds aren't too great either really and it's like woof, 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 woof. so meow the cat it, meow And it's really cute for the first three seconds. But if you've got a neighbour and they've got two cats, as an example, you know, and they live downstairs, and two cats, one black and one sort of greyish uh, with a sparkly eye. But you know, as an example, you know, not like real or anything, but the neighbours downstairs, if they say they've got two cats, and they spend hours meow. 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 you know at night it loses its eroticism isn't the right word but sentimentality or um <laughs> Um, calmness it's kind of you know if if you had someone saying to you I love you really absolutely ab 
absolutely adore you and you're the most beautiful person I've ever met in my life and I fell in love with you, with you before I even met you I've, I fell in love with you in my dreams before I even met you and I've waited I almost feel it's like I've, I was born waiting to meet you and now that I have every day is sunny and you're the most amazing person in this world and I would do absolutely anything for you and I love you so much you are my world and I'm here for you for the rest of my life devoted to keeping you happy and safe because I love you that much so that could be a really nice thing to hear once maybe you know maybe once the first time it's probably it'd be it might be nice if you like them not so much if you're waiting for a bus and you don't know the person you, you know what I mean it's 11 o'clock at night and you've got this person next to you telling you how much they love you i waited since I was a sperm and I, I loved you even then like you know, but even if it is someone that, and you kind of feel the same you feel the same for them and it's a beautiful moment after a while of hearing it and keep hearing it and keep hearing it even though in your mind you might think oh, I'd never get fed up with hearing that you would I think anyone would you know if every if like it was continuous you know you just you get and make your breakfast what, what do you want cornflakes or or do you want some toast I love you worship the ground you walk on yeah cornflakes or toast I love you too but do you want cornflakes I love you and I love it when you ask me about breakfast cereal it's the most romantic thing I for years I dreamt about having this experience of being able to wake up and come down into the to the kitchen to the most beautiful human being that's ever lived on this planet to ask me what breakfast cereal I'd like to eat so it's cornflakes then is it okay it's cornflakes all right okay so it, it's I mean it's a beautiful thing I imagine it's a no one's ever been particularly romantic with me so and I, I stopped being romantic when I was about 16 so I kind of you know I was very romantic before I left school but I did a lot of things quite furiously before I left school that I don't do as, quite as often and you know physical exercise I'm talking about you know running jogging and stuff like that yeah I used to write poems I used to write a lot of poems I was obsessed with this girl at school called Sarah I don't even know why I didn't even know her really but I wrote a song about her and I just I just wanted to it's not that I wanted to be out uh, sounds weird really it might sound a little bit weird tell me if this sounds weird I just wanted to because I was only about 14 or 15 I just wanted to be able to come home from school go up to my room and open my cupboard and there she was that's all I wanted just every now and then for her to be hiding in my cupboard maybe it was weird back then maybe even more weirder now I don't know no, but I really, really liked her. Really. Again, I don't know why. I did... 
doesn't matter why, does it? It don't matter, that's the thing. Is there ain't no logic to a, what was that? There ain't no logic to a downtown spodgic. I don't know. There's no logic. There's no logic to emotion. Logic and emotion are two different things. That's why I don't really do emotion so much. Apart from recently, oh my emotional levels, oh ever so high. But can you imagine though? You know, you're on the toilet. And you run out of toilet paper. And you shout to, you know, your partner. Uh, run out of toilet paper. You can, can come here, what, what, what's wrong? I've run out of toilet paper. Uh, can you get some from the downstairs toilet? Because there's none up here, there's no spare. I love you. Yeah, I know, I know, but I need, I need the toilet paper. You know, when I was, when I was fifteen, I used to dream about the opportunity to, to bring the woman of my dreams toilet paper, because my my grandmother ran out of toilet paper once, and it kind of traumatized me. And I, I didn't realise the door was unlocked, and you know, I thought I was just gonna like put it on the outside of the toilet door, and I'll go away, and she'd open the toilet door and and take it. But I went down, got the toilet paper, brought it up, went to put it down, and she opened the door. And my head level, well, I'm just saying, it was it was it was difficult. Um didn't really see eye to eye after that and I always dreamt that I'd be able to fall in love and that that person that I fell in love with that I dreamt about since I was only three inches tall would just take away all those memories from the past that were maybe a little bit difficult so that almost like my timeline was completely cleansed and purified by the perfection of that person that came into my life to transform every aspect of my being. And that person's you. And it happened. And I just want to say thank you. Can you get me some bog roll, please? Really, seriously, can you just get me some bog roll? I need to wipe my ass. And I, I just, I just want to thank you. That's all. I just want to thank you um, for being here with me and to be able to, to be that blunt as well to talk about wiping your, your bottom, and you know, even though, in some circumstances, I wouldn't want to know that much information, um. Uh, and feel feel free to <laughs> open the window, um, but it's something even even bad smells smell nice when I'm with you. It's something like perfection, just um, it it just fills my heart with so much love towards you. Uh, I just I wish I could I wish I could express it to you. In a, in a more fulfilling manner. Forget it. Don't worry. I'm just. I'll have it. I'll have a shower. I'll have a shower. Forget it. Oh, okay. I suppose you'd like some company, would you? No, thank you. You know, even even the rejection feels like love. The rejection feels like love, and it fills me with with a a deep sense of penetrating flowers flowers penetrating me with with 
not centipedes, but with with a sense of little drums beating, like centipedes on little tiny little drums beating like a little heartbeat. It's almost like my my love for you has its own heart, its own special heart that beats just for you. Hello? Hello, darling? I'm coming in, I'm just make sure you're okay. I'm coming in. Where have you got to? Why is the window open? Oh, that's weird. It's almost like she jumped out of the window to get away from me. So yeah, I've had a bit of a weird day. Had a weird week, really. But that's okay. And, uh... I went out today to town and I got got some shopping to get delivered and yeah, we got on the bus with my friend and he got his dog with him and the bus driver he said upstairs take the dog upstairs to my friend so he, he said we've got to go upstairs and I said to the driver oh, any particular seat you'd like us to sit in I tell us to go upstairs what am I five years old I'm an adult I'm 49 now it's then that I realised that I'm probably going to be a very, very awkward pensioner. I'm going to be a bit of a handful when I'm elderly because I'm not going to take any rubbish from anyone. <laughs> I think I'm going to be, uh, hopefully, I'm like a nice version of that. I'm hoping that I'm a kind of a you know, cheeky, funny kind of version, not just angry, but as I get older, the less I take, the less, I don't know what the the word is, shy, maybe, I'm a shy guy, shy guy, I don't know if I've ever really been shy, let's have a little drink. So I've got some chocolate eclairs today. I'm just going to... They're not actually chocolate eclairs. They're called eclairs. Cadbury's eclairs. That was the whole story, really, about them. That's hardly worth mentioning, really, was it? I just love the way you eat chocolate eclairs and the way you tell those those stories. <laughs> you know, even though the stories don't go anywhere, it just fills my heart with happiness just to be able to, you know, be so lucky enough to be in the same room as you uh, when you tell them. Because <laughs> I love you so much. I did. I had uh, it. I think it would better get a little bit. It's been it's been a while since anybody told me that they love me, so perhaps I shouldn't really. I'm not knocking it. It's just that level of if a dog, if a human was like a dog, that's what dogs could be like. Love me, love me, love me. Yeah, you go. I got my friend's dog, and he goes out for I looked after him and all he all he was doing was going what was he doing I think he was just putting the rubbish out literally that was all he was doing so he went 
outside he was gone for a minute so I was sitting there with a the dog after about four seconds this dog started going absolutely loopy Where's my dad? 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 Where is he? Where is he? Why is he gone? Has he never come back again? Where's he? It's been hours. It's been hours. Where's he gone? He hasn't seen him for months. I'm like, really? I mean, it must be a very... We talk about time travelling. I reckon dogs must be time travellers because their sense of time isn't or doesn't seem to be in tune with our sense of time like humans I'm not saying that all humans are anything because I don't know all humans thankfully um, but I'm guessing that most well a lot of humans have a, a kind of a sense of time you know if you used to sit in a room So you used to sit in a room just watching television or a film or listening to music or something like that and you knew what the time was when you started you could probably guess roughly if it's been half an hour an hour maybe an hour and a half kind of roughly or someone's bibbing their horn another person that doesn't like to actually get out of their car so it's a really old fashioned thing it's, it's, it's going back to the 70s and the 80s and it's very outdated so I think it's old people that do it and young people that act like old people because some people live with their parents still don't they when they're in their 40s and stuff or they've got a very close relationship and they've taken on those traits you know um, not questioned it um, decided not to have their own personality <laughs> and they bib their horn when they're collecting someone and then I've seen the same people come back drop off the same person and, tr and then drive away bibbing their horn you just said goodbye what else is there to say or just to remind you I've said goodbye just to remind you, I still exist. I'm bibbing my horn. I don't want you to forget about me. Needy. How needy. So, them picking you up. Bib, 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 bib. Some people really, really, they do it. I've had people like outside here. Bibbing. Then bib again. Then a few minutes later, bib, bib, bib. Get more. You can hear it. You can almost feel the the pressure <laughs> from the, the car moving into the building and and I'd love to be able to just blow the car up but obviously I'm not allowed to and the it's that real like if it's that important to you then get out of your car it's almost like beep beep beep. Like, beep beep I'm really worried about them now well if you're really worried about the person that technically is only probably about 20 foot away from your car inside that building how about getting out of the car and walking to the door which will take you a minute, no, but one and a half seconds probably, and knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell, making sure they're okay, in person, maybe, and, but no, that's the last option, that's like the very, very last option, and taxi drivers in the past used to and I, so I can see, you know, how things have changed over the years. And that's probably one of the only good things about um, getting 
Ecke einer runter. Ähm Na, no, I suppose there's lots, there's quite a few things. What things are good about getting older? Let me have a think. Let's try and be, I'm not going to try and be positive, I'm going to try and be honest. What? What's my personal uh, appreciations of getting older? Because I have to try and figure out the difference between whether it's because I've got older or whether it's because I'm now on medication <laughs> to help me deal with my... Uh, mental health stuff uh, <clears throat> so that's probably helped a little bit well hopefully a lot and uh, the kind of support I get with that um, but I think So I so what's the good things? See, my libido's gone pretty much. Well it's lowered. It's not gone completely. Um but it's it's pretty much gone. It's but the the so I'm on Prozac and also Depakote, which is a, a mood stabilizer. And uh even before I was on Depico, I've been on bi um, not bipolar. I've been on um, uh, Prozac or fluoxetine, which is called many times over the years, and it always affects the libido. It always affects my. I've got, you know, yeah, it's not a lot going on. So, so for me, if I see someone. That I'm attracted to it's almost like I could see it from a visual perspective like a beautiful painting see not it see her um, as a like wow the from the just from the angles and the <laughs> the angles the as if it was like a statuette and very poetic today aren't I with my words you're not going to be poetic with your feet are you stop stop that stop messing around on my feet I like having my feet touched not just touched just for the sake of it and not by men I just I like having my feet massaged although it's not really a man or woman thing but I prefer it by a woman I just it's just personal preference isn't it I don't really like men touching me just generally and um, that's just a uh, a that's a psychological thing rather than any other thing I prefer. I don't really. I don't really like being touched by anybody. Generally, but if I was to choose, <laughs> it would be from uh, what's the lady that was in. In um, Mad Men, her I'd, I'd like her to massage my feet if I could choose a celebrity. Or Boris Johnson or Donald Trump. I quite like them too. To massage my feet, one each, one each foot. It's just I'm always almost like to feel how sensitive they are because I imagine they've both got very smooth, gentle hands, as I have myself. I think they're very, very gentle to the touch, very, very sensual. 
but at the same time I'd like to kind of just watch them interact together and sort of just observe the kind of things that they talk about that would interest me you know what I mean you know what I mean um what else I lost track there I started talking about feet and had nothing to do with anything and then I started thinking about um, we've all got a fantasy crush haven't we like a fantasy um, celebrity that unlikely to ever perhaps even meet never mind you know do anything else but I just I quite like Uma Thurman years ago, a long time ago, not, you know, just around the kind of Pulp Fiction time, probably. Wonder Woman, the original Wonder Woman. Oh, I loved her. Still do. Um, what other famous celebrities over the years I loved, like I had a crush on, rather? never written a poem about a celebrity it's still time so I'm thinking I've got a ukulele right I'm going to learn to play the ukulele it's only a cheap little thing that I bought about a year ago that I've, <laughs> I've took out of the box I think twice not even tuned it I just I'd like to be able to write songs sing but with an instrument that's not going to be too difficult to learn, to take too much, you know. I want to focus more on the singing than the playing, if that makes sense. And uh, so I'm thinking about looking into learning that. There's loads of YouTube videos on you, you know, learning the ukulele. So I might give it a good old go. And it might, potentially, it could be really therapeutic because I think I've got quite a few songs within me that could be released you know I mean songs are basically poetry to music isn't it it's poetry to singing and that's what songs are so I kind of like the idea of instead of just writing a poem not just writing a poem obviously because a uh, uh, I'm not so into it as I used to be very much I used to love writing poems I used to get very very um, what's the right word did I uh, perhaps took myself quite seriously with poems No, that's not the right word. I expressed myself. I was able to express myself with poetry. Not necessarily rhyming poems, but then at the time, um, I only discovered that rhyming poems were 
or that poems didn't need to be rhymed because I always thought you know uh, if you had a if you had the word bucket then you had to have a word that rhymed with bucket in the poem and when I started reading the beat poetry back in the early 90s everything happened in the early 90s nothing's happened since I'll be talking about this so when I can you imagine in 10 years time or 20 years time I'll be thinking back to this and saying I remember when I used to make these recordings I used to talk absolute rubbish for an old hour and I did hour, I did hundreds of them hundreds of them and I don't know why and I would be, like, be so nostalgic about it and and I'll be thinking I wonder what happened to all those recordings it's just they just disappeared <laughs> I wonder what happened to them all I had them on a laptop the laptop broke I lost everything damn so these beat poets some of them did rhyme I mean it's not like there was a rule saying well no no, no, no longer can you rhyme a poem no of course not but there was a lot of poets that didn't Allen Ginsberg the uh, um, is it Raw is that his, the poem Raw Raw I think it is but it was about his mum and um, and Charles Bukowski, my favourite poet, he, you know, he didn't like aim for rhyming. Um, he's my favourite author, my favourite writer, Charles Bukowski. Out of everybody, he's just, although, I've talked about this in the past, but if you ever really get, if you ever fancy reading a funny book, and you've only you know just a short book and you think okay what's that and you've never read and if you've never read this book before Woody Allen his early stuff I think it's without feathers or white feathers something like that and another one called Radio Days which he did turn into a film but these books are not particularly thick they're not you know you can read it in probably three hours, four hours. Very, very funny. I mean, I, I reread them when I was an. I read them first when I was a teenager, when I was about uh, eighteen or something. And then I reread. The book I reread them when I was in my twenties, or late, you know, top ten years later, or whatever. It's still hilarious, but it's like anything. It's funniest. Sometimes it's it can be funniest the first time you read it. And although there's some things like films that I've seen or I haven't seen for so long that I just get I crack up laughing because I forgot how funny they were but there's other films that I just don't want to watch because I don't want to spoil them uh, The Life of Brian is one for me that was one of the most perfect comedy films I know it's not everyone's favourite Monty Python film and I'm there's never really never really, I mean, a big fan of the Monty Python T V shows. Firstly, it wasn't my era, it was in the sixties, so it was long before I was even born. And when it was on during my life, during the seventies, I wasn't allowed to watch it when I was a kid because it was adult. It was adult comedy. And it used to be on fairly late at night. And then I didn't really get to watch it properly until 
late 80s. But I saw the life of Brighton in the early 80s. For some reason, because to be fair, I was visiting family, so I just had access to all the videos. And uh, I got drunk the night before on red wine for the first time. Well, not the first time getting drunk, but the first time getting drunk on red wine. And I remember, seriously, it was such a weird day. And my little brother was there, my cousin, little cousin. She was probably a little bit younger or the same kind of age as my little brother. And she was absolutely obsessed with the Jungle Book. So there's only so many times I think anybody should be legally obliged to watch any film really and the Jungle Book regardless of how wonderful it, it may be and I, I really I do like the film but since that since that family stay where I stayed and my cousin she was only like four or something she watched it over and over and over and over again and I don't think I've ever been able to watch it since it kind of traumatised me a little bit. Before that, I loved the film. But after that, no, I can't. I can't. It's like when you... If you overdo it, you know, if you eat something and you overdo you just eat a bit too much of something you enjoy eating. You know, I did that with... Uh, what did I do that with? Something I used to eat a lot of biscuits. There was these biscuits that I used to eat, and my nan used to have them. And this is, I think, about 2004-2005. And I'd never had them before because my nan always had biscuits. She always had tins of biscuits before she. Uh, uh, got a little, like physically unable to do some stuff. She was always baking, making cakes, uh, rock cakes. Um, so that would be the first place to go, you know, go and have, a, have some cakes and biscuits that she made herself. But then, you know, as she got older, she'd like, buy the biscuits. And there was these ones, I forget what they're called, and they were like long they were not long I mean they didn't didn't take up the whole room but they were kind of yeah rather than round that's what I mean and I just loved them never had them before I think they were Dutch biscuits or something like that and they were just perfection and I just gobble them couldn't stop gobbling gobbled them all the way up just loved them they're my favourite biscuits ever I couldn't wait I used to say at work I can't can't wait to go to my nan's for a nice gobble and it's I had to explain it was biscuits you know, I didn't realise but it was just the biscuits were so perfect but what happened is I was buying them because you know, at that point, all I was doing was just eating them when I was there with her. And uh, after a while, I think I ate too many because my nan said, you can have to start bringing your own biscuits because you're eating too many. So I think I might have been eating too many. And uh, she handed me a bill for all the biscuits that I'd got through. What a horrible person. <laughs> Andre just let off a stink. Like a proper stink. Oh. Oh. I hope it's him. My phone's dropping on the floor.
almost smells like petrol. say yeah um, the I had all these biscuits and it got to the point where I couldn't eat them anymore I just had too many that's the entire biscuit story but recently I've been buying them again and they're lovely Still can't remember what they're called though. Anyway, that's it for me. So take care of yourselves. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Speak to you next time. Lots of love. Bye.